What's going on guys? So today I'm going to do the follow-up video and the full review of the Garmin Dash Cam 35. And the first thing I'll talk about is the location that I chose to mount it in and it's pretty much right behind the rear view mirror. Um, I do have some visibility of seeing alerts if I look down a little bit, but I chose to mount it in a place where it wasn't going to be um, in the way. I don't want anything blocking my, my field of vision. Um, so it's a perfect location for me, plus it gives a good angle um, when it's recording. So the first thing you want to do when installing this is you want to put the mount on, you know, you're obviously going to want to choose the location that you want to mount it in, clean it off with alcohol. And because it's not a suction mount, it is an adhesive. You have to be pretty decisive on where you want to put it because it's not something you're going to be taking on and off. Um, and so once you put it up there, you do have to let it uh, stay up there without the camera attached for 24 hours so that it has a chance to bond properly. Um, <clears throat> that's what they recommend. The camera is pretty lightweight, so I don't think even if you don't give it that amount of time, I don't think you're going to run into problems personally, but that is what they recommend. So now what we'll do is take a look at the camera itself and some of the functions. and. I did go ahead and read the the manual. You know, unfortunately, like I said, I don't like doing it, but in this case, I went ahead and did it so that I'm giving good information to anyone that's interested in getting it. So what we have here are four different buttons. Uh, the top button is used, it's uh, bi-functional, basically. It has uh, a use for turning the power on and off, and it's also the up button in the menu selection. And then you have the down button in the menu selection, which we'll get to in a second. Um, you have this button, which also serves a dual purpose. It's used to confirm selections, and while the camera's recording, you can uh, you can basically tap this if you want to uh, save a, a photo image. And then the bottom one is used to go back in the menu option, and it's also used if you want to if you want to um, save uh, video footage to the gallery. And I'll go over a little bit more of how that works in, in real usage. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and turn the camera on, and we're just going to hold down this button for a couple of seconds until you see that green light turn on, and now it's powering on. And you do get the warning up there about, you know, do not attempt to adjust the device. Some jurisdictions prohibit use um, of the dash cam, check laws and all that. Now the camera is actually on and it is recording footage. So from here, um, and one thing about this camera is you can see it does have its own battery and you can see the battery uh, symbol right there in the, in the top right hand corner. So it doesn't have to be plugged in um, to use. And on the left side, I believe that's the GPS antenna strength signal. Um, if I'm correct, I'll have to double check that. But um, so once it's recording, it starts recording once it's powered on. So it's a, you know it is a dedicated recorder. Display has timeout options. Um, I'm going to click yes to keep it on for right now. Um, but if I want to save video, I can just hit this bottom button there. And as you can see, video saved. And this camera does record in one minute increments. Um, if I want to take a picture, I can just simply click that. And photo saved, as you can see there. So you can use it as a, as a camera. So really the purpose of this is if you get in an accident or something and you want to you know pull it down and take pictures with this um, that, that's primarily what it's what the purpose of of that functionality is so now um, we can hit the power button again and you can really hit either the up or down but we'll go with the up and that takes you into settings and then you can hit the check um, button there to confirm so it takes you into settings so you have Things that you can adjust. Um, let me make sure I'm actually in camera view here. But you have things that you can adjust, like the alert tones. You can turn those on or off um, about the camera. 
which you know click that real quick it just gives you the basic basic stuff and then you can hit the bottom button to go back um, setup you could go in there and this basically allows you to set the date and time you can change the language you can format uh, the, the SD card that's in there restore it back to default you can change units so if you want it in miles or kilometers you can do that um, and then back to the date and time so then we'll go back one and up here what we have is safety cameras and <clears throat> this has alerts on or off and so I have a little bit of footage of what happens when you come up on a photo enabled red light and I'll show you guys that in, in real use here so you can see what it actually does then you have the option for coverage right there which just has different um, not really sure what this is to be quite honest with you I'm gonna have to investigate that a little bit further um, US Canada Cyclop sample so I'll have to figure out what that is and I'll just put a some information on the video once I can determine that but I'll go ahead and select US Canada the display timeout here um, so if you want the display to stay on for a minute or you can have it off it's one of the two so you know with with the display timeout turned off then I it just stays on permanently um, then we'll go back and you can adjust the brightness level obviously um, you got your different alert tones and then that you know that that's pretty much it those are pretty much the options that you have there <clears throat> and then from there we can go to gallery so what you'll see here you get the little warning that video recording and alerts are stopped while viewing blah 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 saves it from here I can click this and it'll show the video that I actually just took a minute ago when I was demoing it so you can see that now if I hit the check button you can fast forward you can fast backwards um, you can delete in this case I'm gonna delete it so I because I don't need it <clears throat> and then the same thing for photos basically the the thing with save videos and where that comes in handy is if you're driving and you see something like you see a Virginia bad driver you can <laughs> you could simply hit you know the bottom button here on the camera and it's gonna save that one minute video um, to your gallery so for me it, it'll make it easier if I see something happen I just hit save real quick and it's in the gallery I don't have to dig through tons of different files because the way this camera works um, like I said it records in one minute increments so every one minute it starts it, it creates a new file and it just keeps doing that until you run out of space and then it'll overwrite the oldest file and so it just you know keeps doing that over and over and over again like a big loop um, I did upgrade to a 64 gigabyte SD card so that way it'll it'll give me more uh, room to record without things being written over as much um, so now we'll go back one more and you got your camera options here and forward collision warning um, you can adjust the sensitivity on that and that's basically just what it sounds like if you get too close to a car it's gonna alert you and you know beep and all that stuff uh, actually I've had it left in low sensitivity so I haven't had it um, give any alerts yet um, event detection is basically if you get in a crash or something it'll automatically save um, the footage the data overlay I have it turned off you can 
you can change this and you can basically have it um, if you remember my first video where it was showing my location and speed you can have it, it just show date and time or you can have all data so it's showing date time location and speed or you, or you can just turn it off um, and I, I've opted to turn it off because I don't want any of that information showing up um, and then you have your record after power loss up to five seconds and self-explanatory resolution I have it set to 1080p um, and then that's pretty much everything in that options menu so settings you know we already went through and then um, you can also view unsaved videos which is essentially everything that's on the memory card and then you can you know, navigate your way up and down through it um, and that'll you know, show the video that I had there you have your unsaved videos you have your photos you have your saved videos um, and you know that's pretty much it it's a really easy camera to use um, you know this is the screen right there it's, you know as much as you can see it so it records well you know you guys have seen the footage um, it's lightweight it mounts easily um, the way I have it set up it's out of the way um, like I said you can use it without the, the cord in there I'm not certain how long the battery life is and it's not really gonna matter for me because I'm gonna hardwire it so it's not gonna be an issue Okay, so after having the Garmin dash cam for a few weeks now, um, I'm able to form a pretty valid opinion of it. So I'll go over the pros and cons. Uh, the first pro is that it is small and lightweight. It's easy to use. It starts recording as soon as you plug it in. Um, so, you know, that from a simplicity standpoint, it, you know, it, it's, it's not too complicated. Uh, so I think a lot of people will benefit from that. Um, the first con that I'll talk about is the fact that it doesn't record audio, even though for me it's not a huge deal because I don't, I wouldn't really want it to record audio. Um, I think it would use up more memory, and so even if it had that feature, I, I would probably have it disabled to be honest with you. But you know, for some people that may be a con. Um, the other pro is that you know it captures high high quality footage. It's 1080p. Uh, so, you know, 4K would probably be overkill for, you know, for a camera that's uh, serving the purpose of what this is for. Um, the, the other con, and it's nothing major, but it's the fact that you can't remove the name Garmin from the bottom left-hand corner. Um, th that's a little irritating to me because I don't necessarily, you know, for my videos, I don't always want Garmin to show up there. It'd be nice if I could just have the footage by itself. But, you know, that, that's not something that can't be overcome. It's not a deal breaker by any means. Um, the other con is the fact that it, uh, it, 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 the core that it comes with plugs into the cigar lighter. And even though I have the hard wiring kit, the one that I bought plugs into the fuse box and it doesn't allow the camera to turn on and off with the car. So I need to figure out, um, a way to basically tap into uh, I may tap into the cigar lighter I'm still working through it but basically what happens is if, if I get out of the car and forget to turn the camera off it just keeps recording for right now so it would have been nice if they you know if Garmin sold uh, their own wiring kit that allowed you to uh, turn the camera on and off with the car because I don't think anybody really wants to have the wire hanging down from their rearview mirror you know all the way down to their cigar lighter it, even though it works it's not it's kind of cluttery and it's not something i think most people will want to do but overall um i'm pleased with it you know it does the job i like the fact that i can hit the button and save video footage that's come in handy already a few times especially when i'm capturing bad driver footage so for that for that purpose alone it's it's worth it um and would i recommend this camera 
well, let's talk about dash cams in general. Would I recommend people get a dash cam? And the answer is yes. You know, over, you know, I, I can't stress enough how how much I would recommend this because it could it could mean the difference um, in court. You know, if, if you end up going to court or you see something that happens, you know, it could come in handy and it, it could prevent you from getting a ticket. You know, there's a lot of it's a lot of different uh, reasons that I would recommend doing it. So, you know, in general, I'd recommend getting a dash cam. Do I recommend getting this one? Well, you know, it's going to depend. You know, do you like the quality? I went over the settings. Are those settings, you know, that, that you find useful? There's a lot of other options out there. So what I would suggest is doing your research and finding one that works for you. Um, I don't really have any complaints. I don't re regret getting the Garmin, but there are other options out there. So. You know, take a look around and find what suits your needs best and, you know, make your decision off of that. So that's pretty much it, guys. You know, this isn't really the type of video I really enjoy doing, to be honest with you, because it's kind of boring to me. But I did want to give you guys who are interested, uh, you know, my thoughts on the on the dash cam so that you can see all the features and decide whether or not this is for you. So we'll go ahead and end the video there. It's been about 16 minutes, pretty long video. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks for watching. And as always, I appreciate your support and like and subscribe. Thanks.